Hey guys, my name is Clarissa Moon. I'm really passionate about using the arts to make a difference. So this is the first video in a series I'm doing about theater for social change. I'm interviewing John Dodonna, the theater program chair at Valencia College. John is well known for doing docudramas, plays about social issues based off of interviews. We talk about Division, the docudrama he did about the deaths of Trayvon Martin and Jordan Davis, his new play Transition, The Angel Action Wings, and more. Check it out! I am here with the incredible John Dodonna. I wanted to interview today because you are known for using theater as an instrument for social change. Why is that so important to you? I think what it is is I'm curious. You know, somebody once said to me, you're not a director, you're, you're kind of like an anthropologist. And I said, what do you mean? Well, you like find this topic you're interested in and then you do a show about it. And I think that's what I do. I think I get really interested in something. Like when we did uh, Division, you know, the Trayvon Jordan project, I really wanted to know people's opinions. I wanted to understand the different perspectives, including people who hated them, people who loved them, people who fought for them, and the way to do that was create a, a play. And it's the same thing right now with the piece we're doing. We're doing Transition in uh, April of next year. And I have a number of friends who are either fully through the process or in the transition uh, between genders. I'm taking this on to try to get some answers, I guess, because if I'm having questions, somebody else is having Speaking of Division and the Trayvon Martin Project, mm -hmm. you actually worked with Trayvon's parents, I understand? I'm not Trayvon's parents, I worked with the Foundation. And then Ron Davis, so that's who specifically you're thinking of. Ron Davis is the father of Jordan Davis. Jordan Davis died uh, being shot in a car in a Valero parking lot. He helped a lot you know, with photographs, with information. Uh, I was able to interview uh, people uh, intimately connected with the case, and some people peripherally, you know. I was able to interview media people who were there from day one. I was able to interview the woman who broke the story. Um, so it really gave me insight that I would have never had reading a newspaper. But well, you might not even know this person when Pulse happened. And uh, Sanford asked me if I would host the vigil in Sanford. And I didn't know what to do. I felt kind of like, well, this is something I can do, but, but how do I do it? So I contacted Ron. I contacted Ron Davis, and I said, hey, you're the only person I know who to speak to who's been through this magnitude of tragedy, what do I say? And he said, you say what you say, don't worry about it. I am driving down to Sanford and I will stand by your side. He came and was at the vigil with me. What was that like, speaking at the vigil? What, what, what did you say? I don't even remember. Community shattered, you know, what else could you say? It was a vigil for hope at the end of it. And when we finished, and Ron and I were standing there just saying hello to people, all people wanted to do was come up and and there was one woman just hanging on her crying, and he just held her, and that's the strength of a community coming together. That's what it was like. I know personally, I, with doing uh, the angel wings, yes. I, oh my god, that's right, yeah, oh wow, <sighs> memories. Uh, tell me, I've tell seen me. how this community has healed. Why don't you talk a little bit about the angel wings? Why don't you talk about it? Oh man, she was so, so I'll give a little pre on it about what this was, but she was a main participant, so, and her family. I want to hear what she felt. I got a call from the Orlando Shakes from Jim Helsinger, and he said, John, we want to do this thing at the Dr. Phillips Center, and the Angel Wings, in honor of the Pulse victims, and also Christine Grimmie, who had been killed uh, the night before. And I said, oh, Jim, that's wonderful, you know, I'd, I'd love to help out. And he said, no, John, I can't be there, somebody needs to be in charge. And I went, oh, wow. So Jim put me in charge, I brought along David Lee and Margaret Milden, and we organized all these wonderful volunteers to wear these beautiful angel wings, these huge angel wings, that stood outside of the Dr. Phillips Center after the Pulse performance that was done in honor of them. My sisters and my mom did the, oh, outside of too? Dr. Phillips okay. Center. I wore them at the Pride Parade. That's what it was. There was such an outpouring of love and acceptance and healing and people would be shouting, you know, I love you, you you're you beautiful, thank you. You feel like I didn't do anything to deserve all this positive energy. Yeah. Um, it's more of what you represent. Yeah, also, I agree. People crying when they see you, it's... Which no one expected. Mm -mm. We, we, we lined the whole square, we were holding candles, and the people first came out and they stood far away from us first, just staring at all these people wearing wings. And then they started making the journey, and they all, thousands of people, just walked around us and talked to us and held and cried, and we didn't know what to do. It was so emotional. And then I remember leaving. You know, we had a time that this was going to end. 
and we had organized this walkout. David Lee and I had organized the way it was going to go, and we started it, and everybody just started applauding and cheering, and we felt weird about that. Like you said, right? You know, it's weird, but we are not doing anything, and we walked all the way around the Dr. Phillips Center and into the back parking lot, and we could still hear them screaming and cheering. And it's just like Clarissa said, it's like, it was beautiful to be a part of it, but it wasn't about us. It was about the people we lost. Um, and there's theater for social justice, right? Walking around with angel wings became theater for social justice. It's amazing. So you have these pieces like Division and Transition. Mm -hmm. um, how does that process work for writing these plays? I started doing docudramas 20-something years ago. When I, did, I did one about the homeless. I did one about people who, at the time, were, were dying of AIDS. And so you go and you interview people. For the AIDS play, a doctor said, of course you can interview me, but you have to go on my rounds with me. And I went, okay. So literally, my first interviews, I was thrust into making the rounds with the people who were dying of AIDS in a hospital. And it was wonderful and beautiful, and it was heartbreaking. So that's how it's done. You, know, you, you can't make up documentaries. You can't go in with an agenda. You can't go in and try to steer the conversation. You gotta listen. I had to learn that. And then I start looking for patterns. I weave their words together, so it's like a word orchestra. What has the response been like? From the start, really good. I mean, all the way back to the square, that was an accidental show. Um, I was sitting in a little theater that I ran. Don't ever talk to reporters without knowing what you're talking about. Um, so I was sitting in a little theater, and uh, the homeless used to like live in the square around the theater. And so also this guy walks in the theater, and he goes, hey, um, is John Dodina here? And I'm, yeah. And he said, hi, I'm so-and-so from the Orlando Sentinel. Don't even remember who he was. Uh, and I went, the Sentinel. The Sentinel's finally here at my theater. This is great. He went, yeah, listen, I was sent here to interview you. Yeah, you're going to interview me about my theater. Yeah, we were told you were writing a play about the homeless. And I went, absolutely, yes. I said, uh, what questions do you have? We did this whole like half-hour interview about a play I was writing about the homeless. And I remember distinctly, he walked through the door, I watched for the door to close, and I turned to the people who were with me and I went, I, I guess I have to write a play about the homeless now. Because it was, I wasn't. I don't know who he got this information from, so I had to go do it. So I said, well, let's go interview them. And that's how it started. As a teacher, how are these projects valuable to your students? They are exposed to opinions they don't normally get exposed to. It was kind of interesting during Division. One person had to listen to somebody give an interview about, thank God those kids got killed. And she had to sit there and listen to that. And I remember the actress who played the role that said those things on opening night was literally blocked. You know, look at this side of the audience and do it. And she looked over talking about how it was a good thing that, not necessarily a good thing, but that it was deserved that Jordan Davis got killed. And looked over and delivered it right to Ron Davis, the father. And I remember her being terrified of that. But at the end, Ron was like, that was beautiful. He had to. We met people very close to George Zimmerman who came to the show, who loved the play, who wanted George to see it. We're still in the process of getting the tape together for it because he wants to see the tape. He asked, he said, may I see the documentary? Like, of course wow. you can. That was kind of incredible. So I think that's the best compliment I've got. I, of course, really admire your work in the docudramas and all this theater for social change. What advice do you have for me as an artist and a journalist and for others? Uh-huh. Well, you just said it. You're a journalist and you're a theater artist, use that. What am I doing when I'm interviewing these people? I'm being a journalist, right? You know, think about it. Use that person, because if, so, so not blowing smoke around over here, but she's a fabulous theater artist, okay? Um, use it. Find something that intrigues you. It doesn't even necessarily have to be something that you have a passion for, but something that's like, I have a question about that. Maybe it's not a play, maybe it's not a documentary, maybe it's a dance, you know? Maybe it's an article you write, uh, maybe it's a poem. Artists are always commenting on social change. The difference is you're both. You're a journalist and an artist. And also you're part of a generation who wants social change. So you're, you're poised to do this. And I would encourage you to. You know? So, there you go. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Clarissa Moon talking to the stars.